I'm Jessica Gosney. I'm a volunteer at the Grand Swell Community Garden. My name is Elias Atia. I'm also with involved with the Grand Swell Community Garden. Uh, Jessica and I and a bunch of volunteers have helped uh, get this year, uh, this season's garden laid out, planned, and it's growing pretty well right now. So, I think providing your own food is essential. Um, I see all the time mental health declines with inadequate proper food and it's expensive to buy organic produce all the time. Um, so self-reliance and mental health, physical health are incredibly important to your life. I could drive down Magnolia Avenue and all I would find is barbecue places and like takeout. There might be like one or two grocery stores like very far like down the road. But you know, soul food isn't really healthy. I mean, in some ways you could say it's good for the soul, but it's not very nourishing. And to grow your own food is great because to go to the grocery store and to buy all the vegetables and fruit that you need, it can really add up. And it's things like that that make a lot of people kind of put those second to a lot of things. Really you just learn to respect your food a lot more. The more you can provide for yourself the less you have to work which frees yourself up to do things for other people, to do things that you're not, you know, you spend most of your day doing the thing that you do to make money. I'm not sure how fulfilling a life that can be so the more that you can take yourself away from that the more time you have for yourself and for the community. It's, it's really sad in our communities where there are areas um, where people can't buy regular produce, whether it's organic or, you know, conventional. And it's, it's sad to see how cultures connect with the absence of uh, certain foods. And so people's diets become really poor. It can be incredibly confusing for people. There's not really good information commonly for people to figure out what it is that's healthy and what's not. It's really kind of a long transition for people to go from the standard American diet to really knowing how to take care of themselves and nourish themselves in a way that's affordable, um, not stressful, and realistic. And food deserts are, it seems to be a lot, a relationship with privilege and income. Like, my hometown was a very wealthy area. There were probably five or six grocery stores within a mile radius, which is completely appalling when you can consider the amount of consumption and waste. But here, where people do want to eat healthy and do want to reflect a better conscious about their, their body, there is a huge isolation and distance to get to food sources that are better for you and affordable for anything else. I know some of the older generation and I'm sure a fair bit of the younger generation are interested in fresh vegetables and things, but um, it's sort of been made out as like this fancy thing to have organic vegetables, fancy, expensive, um, hard to cook, hard to find. Almost, not as good. Almost like a, yeah, it's like a pretentious culture. Like you, you're privileged to have expensive food, but organic shouldn't be expensive. Organic should just be natural to us. At this point, I think that there needs to be more reaching out into the community, the community of Groundswell and the community around it. I think um, a lot of times with community gardens, people think, well, that's someone else's. I shouldn't take it. Our volunteers uh, usually can take home as much as they seem fits for the amount that they work. Uh, and really, we're trying to open up to the community so that we can we can have more volunteers to help out. Because at this point, I'm not really sure what the our principle on this garden is, whether it's if you're walking by and you just want a few tomatoes, you can take them, or if it's, you know, a work, work uh, for a share of food kind of policy. Right now we are, like I said, giving food to volunteers and we're using, um, using some of the produce to help serve with uh, Food Not Bombs. Food Not Bombs is a loose group of people here in Knoxville. It's an international organization, but it's not, it's, it really has no hierarchy. There's no 
main founding Nut Bombs, it's all very loose. But we basically uh, take donated and found produce and cook and serve for anyone uh, at our picnics on Saturdays at Crutch Park, 2.30. <laughs> um, but we are a anti-consumerist, or I should say we're against the idea of consumerism uh, in that we try to only rely on donations and uh, pretty much reducing waste by uh, collecting food that would otherwise go to the trash and use those use those uh, products and deliver something for the community to you know utilize once again. I think in the future I could definitely see this garden being effective in the community. Unfortunately right now it is fairly small, it's not producing too much, so there's only so many mouths we can feed. The presence of a garden in a community is a nice thing even if you don't yet feel comfortable harvesting from it. Um, I mean, I'm sometimes working in the garden, someone will come by and ask me what I'm growing, and after the list gets so long, they sort of like float off and, you know, okay, I get it, you grow a lot of stuff. But <laughs> at the very least, people see a garden See, I mean, you really don't see workers in here all that much. It didn't take all that much work to tend a garden. Hopefully, it's getting it into some people's minds that this is a possible thing in a plot of land that doesn't really seem like it should be grown. In the future, I'd like to see maybe more ele elements of permaculture be incorporated with this garden. It's like a closed system, a closed cycling system where things uh, generate things die, things regenerate, and you, it's an ongoing process, and simply put, it's a permanent agriculture. And that way, hopefully there could be potentially more workshops, more volunteers, and we could make this space a lot more productive, therefore being able to produce for more people. This, this space could also be an educational area. I mean, it, it's not much to just take a child and show him a garden and show him, or her, uh, how things are actually grown because to some people who've never even seen a garden, they have no clue of the amount of work or the means of how a plant even grows. And if we could get families in here or even just, you know, single folk and just show them how everything works, it's a way to demonstrate that Food is not this artificial element that you find at a, at a store. Food is actually something that comes from the ground. Food definitely should not be something of privilege. You know, someone with an economic or a higher economic status should not be able to afford higher quality food. Really, food should be accessible to all people despite economic level. And can uh, be accessible to all despite can, economic yeah. circumstances. But a farmer's market is just a great way to centralize everything in an area where people are familiar, where people would feel comfortable about going to. And there are ways to involve EBT and there are ways to involve methods of affordability. Maybe um, instead of farmers markets, community garden markets that has like a different connotation. And especially if we're talking about urban food sustainability, it's going to be more of a lawn garden or community garden rather than a farm that's going to be more likely to happen. I mean, it'd be great to just have, you know, little booths of people every once in a while to get people seeing that, I mean, people are used to seeing the booth of peaches or whatever out in the country. Why not in the city? As far as the ideology of a community garden, I'm not sure how I feel ethically about selling food that is already open to the public, but... Yeah, I'm not even sure that produce really needs to be sold.